Hello there, we start with tax and whether the world's corporate giants pay their fair share. Finance ministers from the G7 group of wealthy nations meet here in London later on today and they're expected to back a US plan for a global minimum tax rate of 15%. Now the idea is to stop multinationals from shifting their profits to tax haven countries as the tax campaigner Gabriel Zuckman explains. Mm, well, let's see, shall we? Uh, Paul Monaghan is the chief executive of the Fair Tax Foundation at the UK-based non-profit organisation that accredits companies with uh, paying their fair share of tax. It's a sort of a kite mark, if you will. Thank you very much for joining me today, Paul. Um, now, this is interesting. Um, I guess in your view, do you think there's such a thing as a perfect system of taxation? percent in income tax during their working lives isn't a 15 percent rate a little bit insulting uh, I, what we're talking about um, do you think corporations will actually abide by this rate and if they don't what's going to happen now uh, we're going to have to talk travel aren't we because uh, everyone has been reacting with dismay really after the UK tightened travel restrictions ahead of the vital summer holiday season. Portugal has been moved from the green to the amber list meaning leisure travels not allowed and returnees must self-isolate for 10 days and no new countries have been added to the green list effectively ruling out European holidays for British travellers. Well at least for the moment. Well the news uh, hit the shares of airlines and travel companies as you can imagine. Katie Austin has this. Hello, this is BBC News with the latest headlines for viewers in the UK and around the world. Hello there and a very warm welcome to BBC World News. The detained Belarusian opposition journalist Roman Protasevich has appeared again on state television, tearfully confessing to helping to organise anti-government protests. He is also seen recanting his criticism of the authoritarian president Alexander Lukashenko. His family and opposition groups say he is clearly speaking under duress. The authorities, who've labelled Mr. Protasevich as an extremist, claim television confessions by government opponents are purely done voluntarily. Mark LaBelle reports. Now, President Biden has announced that the U.S. is in a position to donate millions of surplus doses of coronavirus vaccines to other countries. Nine of Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, outlined the criteria for distribution. Well, our North America correspondent, David Willis, says the announcement is evidence that the U.S. is on track to vaccinate a majority of its own citizens by next month. A democracy activist in Hong Kong, Chao Hang Tung, has been detained by police as the city braces itself for protests on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre in Beijing 32 years ago. Ms. Chao is vice chairwoman of the Hong Kong Alliance that has organized the annual vigil. Well, joining me now, Mr. Chu, just explain to our viewers how anxious you think China is of this anniversary. See, I mean, this has had a, a real impact in your life. I mean, are you able to travel to China at all, for example, today? Thank you so much. Now, let's get some of the day's other news. Uh, for con now, do stay with us here on BBC News. Still to come, Twitter begins... Hello, welcome back. This is BBC World News. Just a reminder of our latest headlines. The now, Nepal's Prime Minister has made an urgent plea to world leaders to provide vaccines for his country as it undergoes a severe second wave of the virus. In an exclusive interview with the BBC, KP Sharma Oli said that the UK had a particular responsibility to help, given its close ties to Nepal. Our South, America, our South Asia correspondent, Regina Vaidanathan, has asked him what Nepal needs right now. Now, Twitter has launched its first ever subscription product. The new service is called Twitter Blue, and it allows users to undo tweets. Should we make of all of this? And what does this mean for the future of the platforms? Well, let's speak to the Australian social media export, uh, Dr. Dana Mackay from the University of Melbourne. And um, thank you very much for joining us today. Now, Twitter isn't actually that popular where you are. So why trial it there no. first? For joining us today. Now, Twitter isn't actually that popular where you are. So why trial it there no. first? <laughs> now, United Airlines is planning to bring back supersonic passenger travel for the first time since Concorde was taken out of service in 2003. The American carrier says it will buy 15 ultra-fast jets from Denver, well, from a Denver-based aerospace company at least, Boom Supersonic. The aviation writer uh, Christopher Wanchek says that while it's a thrilling prospect, there are plenty of challenges ahead.
Interesting. Uh, let's check in with all the sports, shall we? Thanks very much, Austin. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Vfritz News. Your business news coming up in about three minutes' time. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Hello, this is BBC News with the latest business headlines for viewers in the UK and around the world.